I would like to present a, a, dif a different approach to participation, that is a digital participation, so like a website for participation. We are, uh, we are recently also starting uh, with the citizen assemblies in the city, in city council in Madrid, <coughs> and it's working really, really well, so it's a thing that could be also combined, but since we have this wonderful presentation by Martin, I can focus in this other channel. In that case, we are talking not about representative participation, so we are not talking about a, a small group of people who represent the, the city, but direct participation. So we are trying to invite all the citizens in Madrid to take part of the city council and take the important decisions in the, in the city. In what I'm going to present is this project. It's called the Consul Project. You have there the website of the project where you can get some information. It's a, it's a project that we started four years ago by the city council of Madrid. But we started from the very beginning doing it with many other cities in other countries. We created this uh, platform, this software for participation, this website. But this website is an open source uh, software. It's an open source website. That means that anybody can take the software, download it, and use it. So any city can just take this, what I'm going to present, and use it for free. You don't need to pay or anything. You can change it as you want. It's available for everybody. And other people can help to make it better. So when we created, we invited other cities. We said, okay, we are going to create a new website. You can use it and you can help us to make it better. Nowadays, there are over 100 cities all over the world using this platform. Okay? Big cities like New York, like Paris, like Buenos Aires, uh, national governments also, like for example, the government of Colombia, the government of Uruguay, also small cities, I think we have the, the smallest one is city with uh, around 5,000 people living in the city. So all the scales, we're using the same so software and working together and, uh, on, on learning how to do participation. Because of course, one thing is having software that works nice and there's a lot of other things that you have to do, like how you communicate with citizens, how you change your legal structures, how you organize inside the city council the work, so a lot of things. But since we share the same platform, it's a good excuse to work together. So I'm going to present what we are doing in the city of Madrid and the examples of participation. But imagine that this same is happening in, in Argentina, in Slovenia, in Sweden, in many other places. Okay? And of course, all the city councils here are invited to, to join the project and, and, and use it. So this is the, the website. What we try to do is to open all the possible a citizen participation channels and mechanisms that are uh, being used in, in any place all over the world. So we, we learn the, the, the practices and the examples of citizen participation, how the cities are inviting the citizens to join the decisions in the city, and we try to, to, to open all these possibilities in this same platform. Okay. So for example, there's a space in the website for debates. There's a space where citizens can open debates about issues they care about. So any citizen can come here, start a debate, then write about whatever they want, and then all the citizens can join and talk together about the debate. So it's a place for meeting, a place for creating communities, for citizen engagement, and to discover what are the issues people are caring about. People can also uh, vote what are the interesting debates, if you like it or not. And this is changing every day with the most interesting debates on the people. So it's a place to meet with other citizens because we think this is the first important moment where you join with other people and say, okay, I care about this, so I found this is a problem, or I would like to propose this idea, and then people can meet. Okay? Mainly for citizens, so it's a place to engage with people. Sometimes we do here also uh, debates with the people of the city council. So for example, they an experts on uh, environment in the city council. And then we can open a debate, and then people can send questions to the, to the, to the expert or to the counselor or whoever. The same vote on the questions, and then the expert can come to answer. So it's also a way to talk directly with the citizens, to, with the politicians or the expert, whatever. But mainly it's used for this citizen debate that, that I was mentioning. Then we have another space that is a bit more interesting in terms of participation, that is citizen proposals or citizen initiatives. 
This is the most basic mechanism for direct democracy that is being used all over the world. That is, people can make proposals, specific proposals on something to do in, in the cities. So for example, a plan for having a more green city, or an idea about the children, or whatever. And they can collect support to the idea. So people can go and click and say, I like it. Okay? In the website, also people can get signatures as spirits. And then when one of these proposals reaches some level of support, in the city of Madrid, for example, is the 1% of the population. So if the 1% of the citizens say, I like this idea, then we take the idea to a referendum, to a voting, and then people vote. People vote yes, we do it. People vote no, we don't do it. Okay. So it's the basic mechanism. The classic example is Switzerland. They have been doing this for 150 years. People propose something, collect signatures, and then everybody vote yes or no. And people vote yes, we do it. This is, for example, an example of two proposals that have been voted in the city of Madrid. This proposal was called Madrid 100% Sustainable, and it was a plan to have a very green city to care about the, the environment, the pollution, and so on in the city. It was a proposal made by 400 organizations who joined together to make the proposal. We opened the website and we said, okay, now you can decide whatever you want on the city council, or propose whatever you want. So they said, perfect, we are experts on environment and, and climate change and so on. So we joined together and we proposed a big strategic plan for the city for the next 15 years. I'm talking about important organizations like Red Cross or Intermon or WWF or whatever, small organization also. They joined, they made a proposal and it was voted and approved. And then we have a plan for the next 10 years to make a really great city. This other proposal, was a proposal to change the public ticket transport. We have a ticket in Madrid that is not very good, it's a bit complex, not very cheap, and so on. And then there was one woman in the city, just a woman, a person, with no organization, no networks, no campaigns, who made the proposal, people love it, it was voted and approved. And this is very important. So organizations with the networks and so on can propose ideas and, and they can take it to a voting, but also independent people can make it. And this is very important because we really want to involve everybody in the city, not just the people who have resources, networks, and so on. That was also interesting because if you check the priorities of the political parties in the city council or party, and also the rest of the parties, for example, these ideas were not the number one priority in the, in the political parties. And then when you open it to just the citizens, you discover sometimes the priorities are totally different issues. Not what we are discussing in the plenary meeting, nobody's talking on the TV, whatever. So it's also a very important way to open the field to another kind of idea that's a good complement to the thing that we are talking and that have been discussed by the, by the councillors and the media. Okay. We can also open, a, we have another space that is for, for to, to do votings. We can vote on the citizen proposals but also we can vote on issues that we consider in the city council that are very interesting. For example, we are changing one of the squares in the city, and then people can vote if they want to change the square or not, if they want to do a redevelopment, or a, what kind of square they want to have as a new square. For example, they have different projects, and they can choose which one. So we can open also like the, the important daily decisions in the city council to, to the city. This is, for example, one, one something that we do. This is the example of the one of the main squares in the city of Madrid. It's called the Spain Square, Plaza España. We want to change it. It's a very important square in the city, one of the, the oldest, the biggest one, and so on. And we want to involve the people in the in the redevelopment. So uh, we involved it from the very beginning. So we asked them at the very beginning, how do you imagine the new square? Do you want to have, I don't know, bike lanes or not? Do you want to have more parking space or less? And so on. So we opened a voting on different issues on the square. People decided how they imagine the new square. Then we got projects from all over the world to change the square. And then people were voting on the projects on the new square. And this is the final voting on the process. People choose, and this is what will be the new square in, the, in Madrid. And it's great because uh, usually when we take important decisions on urban planning on the city, 
when it's just taken by the city council, we sometimes tend to do like huge projects that cost a lot of million euros that sometimes people don't like it then sometimes there's scandals of corruption related with this big construction and so on and when we open from the very beginning the process to the citizen participation it happened the opposite people were caring to make a affordable project that didn't cost so much that was very reasonable that focusing especially on the trees on the places to sit and so on so a project thought from the citizen perspective, how really I want to have this square now and how I will use it. And this is also very important because when we are open these direct participation processes, it's not just that it's more legitimate that the people take the decision because it's the city. It's also, most of the cases, that it's more efficient also for the city council. We spend better the, the money, with, with the same amount of money we can do more things or more cheap things sometimes, so it's more efficient. And also, since we involve the people from the very beginning, it's not as usually that we make a big project and then we, when we approve it, people start doing demonstration or complaining or whatever, because people were involved from the very beginning. So when people decide they finally to do the, the square and we sign the contract, nobody complain. It's everybody is their square. Okay? Also, we have a, another space for participation that is like a crowd law or legislation processes or something like that, is where we try to involve the people in the daily decisions when we change, for example, a regulation, or we improve a regulation, an ordinance or something in the city, we want to involve also the people in these decisions. In the, like, every month when there is a plenary meeting on the city council, we are changing regulation, we are approving uh, strategic plans, uh, ordinances and so on, and we think also people can be involved in this process. So for example, this is an example, we were approving a climate change plan for the city and then we opened this space where we present information on what is the, this plan, why we want to change it, we present some documentation. And then for example, we can open three, four debates on this, the, most in, the most important issues on this new plan that we are approving. So do you, what do you think about the speed of, uh, of the cars in the city? or what idea do you would like to include in this plan or something. So we open a debate at the very beginning when we want to change a regulation. We open some debates where everybody can join and give their ideas, think and so on, and then they can tell us in which direction to go with this plan. Uh, or when we are about to approve the plan and we have already a, a text, a legal text that we want to approve by the city council, we can publish the text and that works like a Google Docs, so people can select sentences, parts of the text, and make comments okay, about the, this part that they select. And they can also vote the comment, they can debate. So it's a way also to involve the experts on the issues on the specific regulation. Before we approve it, we publish it, and then people can make comments and so on, so we can improve it and make a new version of it. And this is working also really nice. Sometimes this, this part of the participation is a bit more expert because usually it's more like uh, this difficult text, legal text and so on. But what the, what the public workers are uh, discovering, and it's the nice thing, that is that there's a lot of experts outside that want to help to do the better regulations for the city. So we open a regulation about the, you know, urban planning and then suddenly we have dozens or hundreds of architects and urban planners outside that give their ideas and help to make it better. For each expert that we have inside the city council, and we have a really good experts on, on, on all issues, always there are dozens of experts outside that could help us to make things better. And this is great because we, we, just, we can use all this knowledge just opening the, the space for participation. The final decisions on these specific processes are going to be taken by the by the people inside, but we can get a lot of ideas and improvement just opening the process. So it's also very, very important for the internal work in the city council uh, that usually the, 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 the public workers are not used to really work with the people outside, and suddenly they have discovered it's, it's much better. If we use this collective intelligence of the citizens, things go much better. So it's again this idea of efficiency, how we do the things. We have also another space of participation that is also very important, that is the participatory budget. Every year we have some amount of money of the budget that is decided directly by the citizens. So we don't take any decision in the city council, we just save some 
some part of, of the budget, and we say, with this money, you can do whatever you want, and this is your money. So people send ideas, vote, and then we just do it. Okay? This is a bit different of, the, of these first proposals I was mentioning, because this is only about budget, so people cannot propose just change the regulation or do something new. It's just how to use the budget. But it's a very efficient way also to do things, because people can see the, clearly the idea, the price of each idea, and so on, and you can do a, a lot of things. So, how does it, does it work? In the, in the city of Madrid, in the specific case of Madrid, we save every year 100 million euros for the people to decide. Okay? This is not really a lot comparing the whole budget. So usually this is, this is around the 3% of the total budget of the city. So still, the city council and the politicians can take a lot of all the decisions, they think are better decisions or whatever, so it's really a lot of space. But it's a lot of money for a lot of things to do. So it's a, it has, it's a very good complement to the decisions taken by the, by the politicians. Okay? The, this amount of money is split in different parts. We save 30 million euros, so 30% of the total amount of money, for ideas for the whole city. So if you have an idea like this, for example, Let's, let's build the bike lanes all over the city, a new network of bike lanes. Your idea can be up to 30 million euros. Then we have 70 million euros, the rest of the money, that we split for the different parts of the city, the different uh, districts or areas. Okay? Each district gets a different amount of money, so like 2 million euros, 6 million euros, 4 million euros. That depends first on the population of the district, so the bigger districts. Like this one from Caral is very big, got 4 million euros, and this one gets only like 1 million euros because it's a much smaller piece. And also, this, this amount of money is a, in an inverse rate with the income of the district. That is, the rich district get less money, and the poor district get a bit more money. Okay, so try to balance the, the effect on the, on the, on the process. So people can send ideas for the city, or people can send ideas for the district they want. <coughs> we evaluate these ideas, so this is the internal part of the software, where we can say if the idea is feasible, so if we can do it, it's legal that the city council do the, that idea, or it's not feasible, we set the price, and we can, if we want, we can include a price explanation, so why that cost that amount. If it's not feasible, so if it's not legal, for example, there's some idea that we cannot do in the city council. It's, it's a competence of the regional government, of the national government. Then we include a line explaining why it's not feasible. So the people can see what happened with all the proposals in a very transparent way. And then for the ideas that were feasible, the ideas that can be done, we publish all of them with the amount of money that cost each of the ideas. Okay? And the, here is where people are voting. In the top, you have the money of the process. So for example, for the city, you have 30 million euros, okay? And it's this bar. And then you start buying things. So I want to buy this idea. 5 million euros, okay? I spend 5 million euros. I still have 25 million euros, okay? So you have to buy the thing that you consider interesting. If you buy expensive things, not many of them. If you want to have a lot of impact all over the city, you can choose the, the cheap proposals. So it's a way also to a bit to educate and to involve the people in the problems of the city council. We know the budget is limited, if there's only that amount of money, not more than that. And then if we want very expensive things, we cannot have a lot of them. And then people have to start thinking as the mayor and decide. For each thing that you choose, there is one vote, and then the project with more votes, we do it. Okay? But again, it's very important. People are sending the ideas. So it's them who write the ideas. We only check that it's legal and how much it costs. And then people vote, and then we do it. Okay? So it's direct decisions on the citizens. And this is very important because this is the only way to really engage the people. If you open processes where the people are not taking the decisions or so, nobody will participate. Because they are tied, they, they, they think it's not useful and so on. But if you open it, then you have a lot of people participating. When the things have been voted and selected, then people also can follow what happened with their proposals. So for each of the proposal, there's this, this website with the, with the results. And for each of the proposal, there's a timeline 
where we publish what is happening with the proposal. So it was approved, and then we open a contracting process like uh, two months later, and then three months later it was finished, and then it was constructed, and finally we published some photographs with the proposal. So because also another thing is of course the 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 work inside the city council is always very slow, it takes months or years to do anything. But if the people can track what is happening with the idea, then people are happy and satisfied, and they also start understanding how difficult it is to do things inside the city council. They can throw the ideas and then they can see the results. Each year, with this uh, 100 million euros, people are approving around 300 projects. So it's a lot of ideas that people are deciding, and then we start doing. <coughs> One of the also interesting things is, before we have this participatory budgeting, with the same amount of money, with these 100 million euros, the city usually was doing like 30 projects every year. Or less. And now, with the same amount of money, we do around 300. So, it's the same money. But if we involve hundreds of thousands of people to think on ideas and think how to use the money, we again, can be much more efficient, and the impact that we have throughout the city is larger. Okay, and this is very important. Okay, it's not just about uh, about the idea of democracy and it's better that people take decisions. It's also that we take better decisions because sometimes very small things that maybe we don't imagine, like like fixing a ramp to go up to a park or fixing something, could make could make a really big impact on the citizen that maybe we are not able to notice. So again, the way using thousands of brains outside to decide how to spend the money. And if we check again what is the kind of decision that are taking, because it's a very important amount of money and how the people are deciding, this is an example, this uh, thing is for the first year of the participatory budgeting. The most supported proposal, the most voted one in the process, is a network of the spaces for recycle. The second is to have more houses for, the, for women who suffer gender violence. The third one is a plan to have like more trees in the city, solar panels, and so on. Around half of the proposals are proposals that have to do with the environment. So people are caring about having a more green and more sustainable city. Around the other half of the proposal, a bit less maybe, have to do with important social issues like gender violence. There is another one for the people who have Alzheimer's disease to have more center for them. There's another for people who are homeless, and so on. So even when there's the majority voting, we have here 100,000 people who are voting, the majority is taking care also about the minorities in the city. Okay, And this is very important, and it's how always happened with this process. This is not because the citizens of Madrid are better, are very well informed, are very nice people. They are the same as everywhere. But if you let them do the responsibility of really use these 100 million euros in whatever you want, the people start caring about the problems and trying to, to help the people who suffer more or the majority, the common good, thinking about the environment. And this happens everywhere. In Buenos Aires, in Madrid, in places with, with low income, with higher income, it's the same. So it's also a good, really a good way to use the money thinking on, on everybody. With all this process, we, it's really all, easy also to engage people. We have around 500,000 people using this website. So half a million people who are registered and who come and vote. Depending on the process, we have more or less people. So for example, for the budget, usually we have like 100,000 people. For some specific voting, maybe it's 200,000 and so on. But it's very easy. If you really open the space and you open all these possibilities, like the debates, the proposal, the voting, the budget, and so on, it's really easy for each citizen to find the way they want to participate. So people just want to open a debate and talk about something, some people send an idea, some people want to decide the budget, some experts go to talk about the regulations. It's very easy to involve a lot of people and really involve them in the most important decisions. In some cases, it's more like bottom-up processes, like this budget. People create ideas, vote, and then we just do it. In other cases, it's as we start the process. So we are going to change that regulation. What do you think? Or we are going to change that square help us to, to change it and so on, but it's a good combination and a perfect complement to the to the, just the decisions taken by the politicians. Uh, this, this project, as I was mentioning, is, is used by a lot of cities, and we were also very happy because there was created a foundation, it's called the Consul Democracy Foundation, 
with 12 civil society organizations and non-profit organizations from all over the world that are working with us and are helping to support the project and to lead it. We have organizations from, from USA, from Netherlands, from Poland, from Germany, Sweden, from all over the world. Some of the most important experts on democracy, on transparency, on open source, and so on, are working together to be sure that this software works, that it's independent, that there's no problem with it, that it's spread to many other cities, and so on. And as I was mentioning, there are hundreds of cities in America, in Europe, even in Asia, they <coughs> were using it from all sizes. And we learn, that is the most important part, we learn together how to use this kind of thing. So it's not just the software that we share, it's also the expertise, how to do the things, and so on. There is a meeting that we have once a year where people from all these government meet together, and then we stay like two days, three days workshop learning on, on how to do the participatory budgeting, the communication, the legal structures, and so on. And it's a good excuse to keep it making uh, better and improving and so on. And it makes it really easy for new citizens, new cities to, to start using this kind of software because we help the rest of the cities to, to, to use it, to install it, to, to, to do the processes. So you can start from zero and then very fast to have all these kind of processes working in your city with no problem. We still have no cities from this country, so we hope some city council will join it. There you have the information, the contact information of the project, and we will be really happy, uh, happy to help you to make it work and join the collaboration. Thank you very much. <laughs>